Good morning, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Disciples and Devotees. Today, I'm happy to say that our beloved Madhusudan has agreed to a second interview. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste, Narada. You're going to tell us uh, about how you actually meet with people. Uh, you were going to tell us about the occult forces that are at work, so please continue. It's, it's truly amazing. Uh, people get to know me uh, somehow through, I guess, I call it a magical connection or divine connection. Because I don't do any publicity. I... Yes, I'm on internet, but I didn't put anything on internet myself, never. I don't even know how to use this particular system efficiently, excepting for booking my flights. That's all I know what I can do on internet very well. But everything else is redundant for me. But people, people who know me, my students, my patients, <coughs> have written or put things on internet. And so people get to know about me through word of mouth or through contacts. Mm. And mostly through people who have been helped. So people call me from all over the world, and from Germany and Italy and so on. I have a small practice in Italy, and I have a small practice in Dresden, Germany. Um, in the sense I call it practice, where people can meet with me and where I can advise them and give them, uh, I can assist them. So let me tell you how then it works, how it comes. I'll give you a very specific example how energy works and how I apply it, how I use it, so that it's more concrete than just words saying, you know, use the mother's grace or mother's consciousness or Shobinda's consciousness. But how do we apply it? What do we do? And it's not very complicated. You will see. So people get to know me. They come to me and I ask them. I never ask them straight away what their problem is. I ask them, you know, come in. What's your name? Let, let me know a little about you. And then ask them, what is it that I can do for them? <clears throat> Almost every time, it's somebody who has been, who has come to me through recommendation of somebody else, either a doctor or a family member or a friend, and even places from far away have written to people, or people have seen on internet something about me. By the way, the interviews Nara did with me a few years ago, and they are on internet. I guess they are on internet. Yes, they're all on the internet. They're on the our website, Mother and Sri Aurobindo, one word, dot in, or on my YouTube site, Richard Eggenberger. You can access them just by typing in Mother Sudan's name. Fantastic. And so people have seen that those videos, and they, they said, look, we have seen it, and we feel that you are the doctor that and, that can help us. And that's amazing. You know, when somebody comes from far away place who has never seen me, who has never known me personally, <clears throat> says, I saw this on the internet, and I'm convinced that if there's a doctor on earth who can help me, it's you. And these are the real words, and at times even more, uh, to the point, which is very embarrassing, is when patients who have been cured or who are being helped say to us, Madhusudan, you're God. And I said, for heaven's sake, don't give me that responsibility. I like to joke. I like to really laugh. And I tell him, for heaven's sake, not me. You don't know me. You know, you Don't make me a god. There is a god. If there is, for you to find. I am Madhusudan. You know, but no, but then you're a saint. You do. I said, perhaps I'm doing the divine's work, what the divine wants, what God wants. But I have nothing. I'm not in person with him. I'm not him in person. And this is very true. I don't want to be a master. What a boring thing. It's enough to be master over myself, and I've not yet reached that point where I can say I'm master, 100% master over myself. So I don't think so. I want to be master to anybody else. I help people to become master over themselves. So people come to me with this particular introduction that they have known me through someone or somebody or some channel, and then they tell me the problem. For instance, very recently, it's only about six at maximum seven or eight weeks ago, <clears throat> a lady in Italy, 64 years, came to me, but her appointment was made by a friend of hers who knows me, who is a patient of mine, who has helped, and who said to her, look, this person is the right person for you. You have to go and see Dr. Madhusudan Patel. 
So this friend of hers called me saying, look, I want to bring this patient to you. And uh, it's very important that you see her because she has been suffering since her childhood. So this lady comes, she's 64 years old. She's all bent over. She's shaking and look at my face. It's terrible when a person shakes like that and looks like that. 64 years old, all bent over. And she sits down in the chair. And I don't use normal chairs. It's a, a fauteuil, an easy chair where the person can even lean back. Mm -hmm. And I sit on a normal chair. I sit, sit down and she sits down and she says, Doctor, forgive me that I'm shaking, but I'm suffering from Parkinson for the last five years. And I look at her and I said, hey, you, 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 you don't have Parkinson. She says, yes, no, no, I'm taking, I even take medication for Parkinson, but today it's very strong. I said, don't worry, sit down. And I calmed her down. I talked to her very often of very simple things to make her feel at ease. Don't go into medical stuff and all that. And the more I talked to her, the calmer she became. Now, what was I doing while I was talking? I was not only talking. I was totally in a state of trance inwardly. And nobody knows this. This is the first time I'm talking about it. It sounds crazy. Yeah. But it's a, it's a state of trance. But you don't see me differently. I'm the same um, uh, joking, uh, simple person who is at ease with himself and the world. Lighthearted. Lighthearted. That's true. Exactly. Lighthearted person. But I'm in this particular state because you don't have to show that state on you, that you're like Buddha or like mm -hmm. the Dalai Lama. And you see the person calming down. Then I did what mother has told me to do, and I find an excuse to touch them, and I said, please don't mind that while I'm talking to you, that I'm touching you. And she says, no, no problem, because I said, I'm trying, I'm, I'm taking back frequencies from you, I'm just feeling you, mm. and it's not just for touching you physically, but it's for really getting in contact with your energy and with you and my energy. Mm. And so while, I, while I'm talking, you don't mind if I, no. And you can see this lady stopping tremolo. And then I do a particular session, what they call um, energy session. I don't know who invented that word, energy session. I think one of my assistants or somebody. Where I basically touch the patient here, here, of course here, while I, when I do that, here, there, there, at the base of the skull. Then I touch them here just on top of the tail. I also put my hand for male patients on their um, sternum, um, solar plexus, where the ribs and, and the, uh, I don't know how you call solar plexus in English. Oh my goodness. I speak eight languages and none of them perfectly. Um, I do that for, for women. Evidently, because I don't want them to feel um, embarrassed and so on. So even when I touch, it's very light. My touch are very, very light and not heavy. I don't put my hand on the sternum, but I put my hand very lightly over the abdomen and the lower abdomen. And then these two points, I don't know if you can see here, you know, mm. where your Achilles um, um, tendon. Uh, tendon is. There. And what... They are in a stretched position because this chair, the, the, the seat in which they the, the, can lean back, it goes back. So they're stretched out. Their legs are on a, on a stool, special stool. Mm -hmm. And I ask them to close their eyes and breathe deeply. And I have selected a specific music. I took many, I drove, I don't know how many miles in the United States searching for music that I can use for my uh, work. And uh, the last music I would use is mother's music because I don't like it. And she knows that. I, I don't enjoy mother's uh, music. Uh, I don't know why, because it's just a question of taste, I guess. Um, 
I would be very interested if you could tell us about the music that you love and use. It's 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 a very simple. It's I I can't even remember the composer's name, and it's it's music which is called the Healing Waterfall. Mm. And it's amazing that when you think about it, uh, this waterfall is a very significant thing. Think about our sacred river, the Ganges. And think about water, it's as an element, as an energy. You know? And everything began, remember, first in water. You know, we first okay. evolved in water. So it's a very important divine element created by Brahma. You know? And even before there was earth, was water. You know? It's an interesting concept. Anyway, this, this particular piece is called the Healing Waterfall, which I very much appreciate. Um, I'll make you hear it as soon as I get a chance. It's not on this, but it's on my other side. Uh, Andy. And I play that and ask them to keep absolutely silent and to breathe deeply. And I ask them to repeat a very simple mantra. And I don't, I have never taught anybody to repeat uh, Sanskrit mantras because they don't understand them. They got to understand. Mantras should be something that a person can understand. Because, again, it's sound. You repeat a sound which is energy. Yeah. Hmm? When you say, Om Namo Shiva, it's energy. I asked them to repeat in the head, not loudly. I feel so good. I feel so well within myself. Ah, I feel so secure within myself. This is the most wonderful place on earth within me because I live in this body. And this is my first attempt to make them become conscious of their being. They as a being and they not as a body. How can I be in my body? How my body can be in my body? But when I say I am in my body, that means I as a being live in this body. I'm my first step to making them conscious to this divine energy, the soul, the divine in us, this consciousness that I am. And I am, not physically, because I'm saying I am in me. The most wonderful, peaceful place on earth is in this body in which I live, which is totally healthy, and every cell is in harmony with each other. And I'm one single luminous being living in this luminous body. And they really calm down. Long ago when I was in the States and so on, we had done an experiment that before they come, we take blood sample. If I take blood sample, we can do that anytime here or anywhere else. Take a blood sample of a person who just comes and then we go through a little session and then we take again a blood sample and we see the difference in the blood quality, the level of the value of the immune system, for instance, how much adrenaline there is in their body, and so on. And there are fantastic things in medicine that we can control and see, and that we can use. Remind me to talk to you about some of the hormones that we can create in our body that help you even more than hard spiritual discipline of meditating for hours. We'll talk about it perhaps a little later. But let me tell you what happens with this particular lady that she came. <clears throat> uh, her name is Marianne, nobody knows her, so I can say, we'll call her Marianne. And so she's there and I can see already asking her to say, I feel well and so on, I can see that her tremors are stopping. I did what I just said, I touched during this music session and then Finally, I also put my thumb here and my mm. arm. Let me show you. It's crazy, but it's interesting. For the, for the first time, I end my session by putting my thumb there and holding my arm there. And I'm totally within myself. And now I'm one with the Ramani consciousness. And I take my patients into this Brahmanic consciousness 
and whether they are aware or not, they become part, a total part of this Brahmanic consciousness. And when I finish, I also then end always by doing that and that, and I am not doing it. This is again the Divine Mother, the way she blessed me, the way she treated you me, the way she taught me. Show me how you did it again because we didn't get it on. Now you can do it proceeded. No, I have to stand because I do it with my left hand, very specifically. Okay. So, I, be, I, put my, I end the session by putting my, first my hand on the abdomen here, then I put my hand there, then I put my hand here, And by repeating within my consciousness, Om Namo Shrima. Hmm? And when I, when I completed this, this woman was not shaking at all. Her, her jaws that were, mm -hmm. you know, shaking because there's um, the symptoms of Parkinson that make you shake. And she says, goodness, I have never felt so good in my life. I'm 64. I have suffered from f as far back as I can remember from my childhood. And this woman comes from a very wealthy family, the only child. No, she was not the only child. She had a brother and she, her father died when she was 10 years old. These people are extremely wealthy. Uh, she had suffered. She told me, just listen to this. She had spent more than four years in a psychiatric clinic. She had attempted suicide. She was a heroin addict for several years. She had gone through all sorts of drugs. She had gone through all sorts of treatments. She had tried to commit suicide because she was so unhappy. And now she says to me, I can't, I can't believe this. I feel so good. I feel as if I'm reborn. <laughs> that is fine. And she was not shaking anymore. There's a little tremor in her hands, but that terrible shaking and everything. And then she goes. Her driver was waiting. And I saw how difficult it was for her to get into. Oh, yeah, she also has very severe problems with the lumbar part, her back, her lower back. And there's Atos there, and there. she has a lot of other problems too, um, um, in, intestinal problems, because she takes, she takes tablets, two hands are not enough to fill the tablets. Can you imagine today's medicine? Eating tablets, handful. I, have no, I can't believe this. It is out of this mind. And I said, my goodness, if I ever meet your doctor, the first thing I'll do is give him a slap, and the next thing I'll do is remove his license to practice. I said, you can't do that. He's 70 years old. I said, I can see he's 70 years old. His knowledge is absolutely antique. And when you take those tablets, all these tablets for various illnesses, for various purposes, they act against each other, but most of all, they destroy your digestive system. And so many other side effects. This woman can't sleep at night. She has great problems sleeping. And then she she's so exhausted that she falls asleep. And that night... She's tormented, she's fear, she's full of anxiety. And she's wealthy. She's not married, she never got married. She has a brother who's very kind, her younger brother, four years old, who looks after her. Two days, I left the very same day for Germany. This was in Italy. Two days later, I receive a call in Germany. It's her friend who had brought her to me, or sent to me. She says, listen, I'm with Marianne. And she wants to talk to you. We have some very good news. So I said, I'm glad. What are the good news? And she says, Doctor, you are right. My treating doctors, my specialists, have said that I don't have Parkinson and that I can get off Parkinson medication. And I, I believe it or not, I'm not shaking. I'm not 
I'm not, you were right. You told me the truth. I said, I did what I had to do. It is your truth. It is your fact. It's your body. And so if you're not sick, you're not sick. Regardless of what I say, regardless of what your doctors say, you have to know what you are. And this woman is so grateful. She calls me every single day to give me the news, how she's doing. She says, just to hear your voice changes my whole state of being. Hey, I'm just a clown. I'm here to shoot the breeze, as the Americans say, to have fun. Yes. My friend, the Dalai Lama, also said like me in my book, the only meaning in life is to be happy. And I don't think mother told me anything else but that. My child be happy. Because if you're happy, you are, your physical health is perfect, optimum. Your emotional health is optimum. Economical health is optimum. And health, optimum health, economical health, doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire. For me, economical health is when you have a roof over your head, food on your plate, you're not naked, and you're not bare feet. And that's economical health. And that's at the third point, because it's what keeps you alive, is food and, and clothing and shelter. And then your spiritual health. And no, I put after economic health, social health, that you get along with humanity and nature. And very important, I mentioned nature with birds and bees and flowers and ants and scorpions and snakes. They're all creation of the divine. And then, very important, spiritual health. And they asked me, what is spiritual health? I said, love. Just the fact that you love life, that you love yourself, that you understand yourself, that you identify yourself with the divine grace and the divine being, whether it's Jesus, whether it's... And when you love this divine creation, for me, it's spirituality. And your spiritual part is when you realize yourself, you become yourself what you want to be. Now, you can see, this woman comes. Every time I'm in Italy, I'm there for 10 days every time, at least. And she comes every day, and she insists that I do this particular session of relaxation, or energy sessions, as they call it. And what I'm doing there is what Mother taught me. Uh, and, and these are things that were done privately by, with Mother and me when I met her. She taught us a lot of things in the group when she gave us lesson. There's a photo of mine sitting in front of the mother with the other children in the playground after, after our sport activities when she used to teach us French. And for me, I feel this is the only way that I can really be grateful to the mother is to continue their work. They came, they gave, they taught, and people are talking about them, talking good things about them, but that is not spirituality. That is not doing their work. That is not manifesting their work. I want to manifest their work. I even speak about how things get manifested. And I tell them, look how important energy is. And if Narad permits, I would like to ask Narad questions to explain you something, to prove to you that everything begins with energy. And without it, nothing takes place. If I ask Narad, how, when did this chair or this fauteuil, I don't know what you call it in English, when was it born? When did it take place? When, did it, when was it created? No idea. Ha, huh, very interesting. It's not the day the carpenter built it or the person who did it. It was already born. The moment the man who made this, or the woman who made this, said to himself, I want to do something. I have to create, I have to survive on this earth, so I have to do something, I have to work. Now, I don't want to be a medical doctor. I don't want to be a space scientist. I want to do something with my hands. No, I don't want to bake bread. I would like to build. Build what, he says. And mo already, when he said, I want to do something, the first molecules of these chairs have in an energetic form are there. And the more he thinks about it, the more this chair is taking place. Until he decides, oh, I want to make furniture. I don't want to make beds and almeras and chairs, uh, tables. I want to build chairs. 
this chair is truly taking form. The manifestation of this chair at an energetic level is taking place. Until he says, yeah, I want to make chairs, and how do I want it to be? And he visualizes inwardly, like an architect does also for this building and all that, how this chair is going to look. And I promise you, I guarantee you, that this chair is 100% as he conceived it in his mind. Because he conceived it first in his thoughts, in his mind. The architect visualizes without being conscious how this building is going to be. And every single stone is placed exactly as it is supposed to be. It didn't happen that he just started haphazardly putting stones together and this building took place. Or this chair became a chair. Did so this builds the energetic form. And then you manifest it through action, work, act, what mother said. Don't talk. Do it. And they did it. Nara decided that he wants to do a particular service of the divine as his contribution to this creation. And he's doing it. That's why we are here. This is service. He doesn't talk about it. That he, mother said this, or Shobindo said that. <laughs> Big deal. They wrote books. Read them. They say it better than anybody else can repeat. So, you can see, if you can concretely visualize what you want, you will see that it takes place because you are doing it unconsciously. See, this man built this chair, but he was not conscious how he did it. And you, everything that you have achieved, even the fact that you are wearing this particular shirt, was volontà, as we say in Italian, the will, the desire, the wish to wear it, it because you wanted it. Mm. And you are not totally aware that you are consciously saying, today I'm going to wear this shirt. You just said, hey, I like it, today I'll wear this shirt, and you wear, because you don't want to go naked outside, you dress. But you see that everything that you have achieved, you have achieved through this particular principle, that it first was at an energetic form. All your studies also, you decided what you wanted. Then you acted on it, and you became an engineer, or you became a, a mechanic, or a doctor. But this is why, if you're aware of how you manifest things and go about energetically, you will see it becomes very easy. And the thing is that you don't have to sweat. I see people praying to the mother or to Jesus saying, oh, I want, I want, I want. And that's absolute waste of power, energy, and time. And you're not helping the divine to manifest what you want. Do it by what I said. Tell me exactly what you want. Think about it. Make a clear picture. And if you can see what you want, then it is very clear it will manifest. And then you don't have to sweat. So the mother told me, Morpheus, when you know what you want, don't worry, it will happen. I will, I will make sure it takes place. So even when I have had big debts, and I say, how? A debt can be paid only if you have money in your account. How do you pay a debt when there is no money in the account? Very simple, you don't pay it. But it doesn't help by my being worried and not sleeping at night. So I just say, hey, and this happens in a second. See, this debt has to be paid. It will be paid. It is paid. And then miracles of miracles happens, and I pay them. I have never gone into debt. I have always paid every single penny. And if I started with $5 in my pocket and paid all my studies myself, I never got a scholarship, I never got a ba bank loan, and my family, I never asked for a cent. But they did it. They have billions, billions. The whole fortune that on this earth belongs to the divine in that sense. And it's only material. The energy behind it is very important. And she explained to me also. She said, that is Lakshmi, that is the energy of money. It's very important. I have written a book, it is on my computer. When I have enough money, oh there, Srima, print it please. I've written a book called Spirituality. What is spirituality? And what is illuminated materialism? Where I'm explaining how important it is, body and soul, matter and energy. And everything that's material is very important, but without energy, nothing takes place. Nothing. Not even this chair. So I work with this type of energy. People, really, this woman today, she says her brother, 
who had told her, oh, don't go to this doctor. I, I want you, I'm taking, because they're very wealthy. They've gone to the top clinics and everything. And then when he found out how well she, she and he now is also a patient of mine. His son got operated two days ago in Milan. They called me extra. Hey, please send energy. I said, it's there already because they're over. I don't tell them that they're there. I said, it's there. Don't worry. It's, it's okay. It's there. And believe me, this is how mother's work gets done through one simple clown. I never was a serious student. I never wanted to be no number one in my class. I was always naughty. I always studied at the last moment. But if you do the divine work and you did, you have the best of times. You can own anything and everything and still not possess nothing. And this is the fun. I have everything. There's nothing missing in my life. I don't, don't care for luxury, but we are living a very clean, decent life. Very interesting. There's nothing missing in my life. No, I do complain at times to her. Hey, I want you back here materially. Yes. And when I went to the Samadhi, when I arrived, I couldn't help but cry because I miss her physically. And I want to miss her physically. I, she taught us how important it is not to be attached. And I said, I don't give a damn. I want to be attached to you. And I'm attached emotionally to the mother. I want her physically. And I want Shobin the physically. And I talk to him. And I let his wisdom and his knowledge guide me. And I let the mother's grace make me act and do what I have to do to live on this earth.